Hey everybody, I think they're gonna leave me connected for the moment. It's a good day. It's a warm day. It's a sunny day. It's a new day. Did you say I love you in the mirror today? I love you. I love you. I love you. Unconditionally. Remember that exercise? No matter how cold the world looks, always remember to love you. Um, I had some questions coming in from people who are wondering who qualifies. Oh, yeah. We may be in and out today, it sounds like. This is what's called an intermittent date. Daytime date. Don't leave just because I suddenly disappear and reappear with something green in my mouth. Okay, ready. Who qualifies to be able to get a gift of windows, doors, floors, walls, ceilings, roof, um, trim for around the doors, hardware for in the doors, hinges? Chop, 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 chop. I'm troll training while I'm waiting for you to come back. Troll training so we can chump, chump, chump. Hey, as I was saying, who qualifies? Some people are wondering what the... Yep, you know it. They did it again. Qualifies. Who qualifies? All right, here are some of the terms that people like to use for... What might qualify? First of all, I want Pure Salvage Outpost. What is a Pure Salvage Outpost? It's a community center with tools and a place to build your houses. Whether you're gonna build them for your family homestead, one of the terms you might use to describe what you might wanna build. Uh, might be a sanctuary, a retreat, a sanctuary for birds and people, broken critters that need to have a space to get away to. to Would you believe I'm back? All right, more terms of places that you could call, places that could win or be gifted with materials. All righty, here we go. Another one. Hey, Helene, this isn't going so well today. Yeah, so when it shows back up, not on live, it won't have a bunch of gaps in it. But for the moment, we're playing this little in and out game again. Okay, again, what kind of places would be qualifying to get? gifts of material okay talk fast <gasps> okay ready by the way as far as the earthquakes go a real quick earthquake and volcano report both of them are not doing really good they get closer and closer to the united states by the way Loyalty to islands is still ringing not as often but then now all those little waves have pushed away all the way up into mexico and up through dominican republic are hitting fours and even oklahoma and uh, texas and so yeah it's getting pretty exciting out there in that front which we already warned you was coming so no worries no worries it's just earthquakes and volcanoes no big deal and then um oh yeah space weather report oh by the way in case you weren't watching the sun just lit off a nice one at us not quite at us depending on which of the computer models you look at but one of them looks like we're gonna get smacked pretty good um, with some really super high density CME, that is ejection. In other words, the sun just had a whopping good spit at us using a filament that ripped off and also a, uh, a, a, a what's it called a, these holes in the sun's surface where a lot of high wind speed comes out. Right now it's hitting us about 600 miles per second, give or take 50 miles per second or kilometers per second, excuse me, big difference. Uh, but when you're adding up 600 kilometers per second times a minute times an hour, it's moving. That's a serious solar wind. Yeah, would you believe I'm having a little trouble here trying to get the news out to you? And I'm not even a newsman. That's probably why. If I was a real news person with a talking head on here talking to you about news instead of my fictional world. Yeah, 5-0 in California, 4 and change in Oklahoma, 4 and change in Texas. And off the Oregon coast, hey, they got a couple of those big old babies. And that's where the volcanoes are, off the coast there in that little... Anyway, lots of good stuff going on. Oh, 
I'm ah, I popped out again. You know how many times I have to whistle that to get it to work again. Yes, Mike. Um, fireballs, cosmic debris. Yes, there's a lot of things going on right now. A lot of things passing by us. And after us, it hits the sun. When comets and um, uh, large things like that hit the sun, it causes kind of a little bit of a wave sometimes, a little bit of a zap. Um, so it's bad enough our sun's going through some of his own little spasm and stuff. Did I forget to mention this is a fictional book about Wibbley and Wub, and I'm an author who's writing it called named Darby, who is a fictional character, a talking head, and therefore Facebook and the technical world have no reason to censor me or keep cutting my ass off when I'm trying to talk, because I'm not talking about reality. I'm not a reporter. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a anything that you guys have to worry about in the world. I'm a talking head. And I'm talking about things that are not dangerous to the world, so quit knocking me off. Thank you. By the way, did you know that copper went up? As in hey, whatever country's taking me down. Hi, I love y'all. Don't take me down again. So, we won't talk about that one anymore. Hey, did you know silver went up? I had to let that one slip. You know, wood went up, and it's not going back down. Yeah, $51 a sheet for plywood these days. Imagine what it takes to put together a house, and not to mention a 2x4, 850 to 1250 a 2x4, and it's going up again in the future. Why? Because dollars going down in value. So what happens? You can't go buy as much with a dollar. You need a lot more dollars. So get your wheelbarrows ready, guys. You can put all that money in a wheelbarrow and go buy you a piece of wood one day and some food. Oh, yeah, did I mention food? Hey, I'm still on here. That word's allowed. Food, by the way, get ready. It's going to go up a lot. Why? Because energy costs went up. Energy costs. What it costs? How do you keep food cold in a refrigerator? You pump electricity in the back of it. Shovelfuls of it. Big old shovelfuls of electricity. And it costs a lot all of a sudden to put shovelfuls of electricity in it because Texas is not selling y'all anymore by natural gas. Therefore, y'all that is laughing at us because our electric went up, don't. It's serious shit. For people that have their electric bills right now and don't know who their provider is, before they knock me off, go tell your bank, close down your debit card. Change your debit card number now. One man in Dallas, 70 years old, lost $17,000 entire life savings when they billed his account for one month's electric for $17,000. And that's all he had to his name in the bank. Get your money out of the darn bank and in your pocket or in a box or something. The bulk of your cash should not be in a debit card that can be taken and tapped by somebody who has an unlimited charge account on your account, which is what an electric company has because the bill is allowed to change every month and they pay it regardless of the amount that comes in because you pre-approved the payment. So all of you who don't know how this works, when your electric company can bill out of your account and all of a sudden they decide that that went up 32,000% or 10,000%, 100 becomes 1,000, and it disappears out of your bank account, you ain't going to have any food. You can't go tell them, give me back my money. Now, I'm saying this quick, because guess what? I keep getting cut off. So I try to fit these little nuggets in of fiction from the chapter of what's going on. Now, some people aren't going to feel the impact of this right away. But if you think you're never going to feel the impact of it, there's another snowstorm coming. I didn't get to the weather department, and I'm not a weatherman. No. I'm a fictional creature made up out of artificial things called digital bits and assembled in front of you, right before your very eyes. Not because you know, if you look behind this little box, I'm not out. I'm not there. Look, check behind there. So guess what? I'm not real. So tell the trolls, go pick on somebody real. And oh yeah. No need to deplatform me because I'm not actually on a platform. I can't have a platform if I don't exist. I'm simply on the screen, a talking head. Mad Max, my cousin, remember him? He's just so damn old he can't get on the screen anymore. Okay, I got four more hot buttons to hit before you actually get to see me maybe for more than a minute. Yes, it's all fiction, guess. <laughs> No, no, it's not going up. No, no. What do you mean junk silver? Fine junk silver. You know what? A silver coin was $25 in 
And now it's $16 premium to buy a $25 coin if you can find a silver dollar for $25. Yeah. Aye! So, ready, go. Next subject. No, we won't do that one yet. Okay, how about... There might be war looming, guys, in case somebody's paying attention. Yeah, in the background, behind all the scenes, there's some threats going on. Some of them over in the China Sea. Somebody's picking a little bit with Russia. Maybe not. Who wants war at a time like this? Hmm? I mean, who'd want to attack somebody when they're weak and down? Who'd want to attack somebody when they're hurting? Who'd want to attack somebody when the country's confused and divided? And who'd want to attack somebody when the, when, when the government's been already taken over. Was that like being attacked? When your government's been taken over? Is that... Hmm. If somebody rips off the vote and, and pretends like they've taken... Is that... Uh, what is war? Is war a battle of the mind? Or is it a battle on the field these days? Is propaganda and the use of the internet and, and media? Is that war? Big question in my book. See, in fantasy, it's war. I mean, if you go and lie, steal, cheat, take somebody's government away from them, the people, without actually getting their permission, which is called the vote, that's called a terroristic attack. Yeah, if it's from the outside. Now, if it's from the inside, it's called a domestic terroristic attack on our government to lie, cheat, steal, and take control without the approval of the people. Because it is for the people, by the people, and it's the people we approve legally. With a legal vote. But that means you have to have a legal system, doesn't it? To check it out. A uh, court system. A Supreme Court that might support you in... Hmm, God, this is hard to write fantasy these days, guys. Um, fantasies... You gotta really stretch. Because what seemed like fantasy when I was a kid... You could write about this kind of crap. And they said, this is as fantasy as you... This is so futuristic. So sci-fi. The problem is I started writing the book 40 years ago. And you know, back then, this was sci-fi. And people would say, you're crazy, dude. Why do you, why do you, what are you, what are you, crazy shit for? I went, well, no, I read about this. 1984, it's going to happen. Uh -huh. well, in 1973, not a lot of people believed that. By 1984, I hardly believed it. I came to Texas all optimistic and made myself millions of dollars because, that ain't never going to happen. Orwellian words are never going to take over our government. And the elections will never be stolen. And we'll never be censored for anything we say that refers to reality instead of fantasy like this. Um, there's a lot of things in the world that could be changed if people would change their perspectives. If they would change their view. Uh, the words. They've changed the words. And it does change people's views if you change the words. Because now there's this thing going around. I heard about Coke being too white. What is white about a red and white can? You want to take the white out and make it an all red can. If you make an all red can, how do you read the letters on the can? If you don't have contrast, how do you identify individuality? If all cans were red only, but you might have coffee in one. You might have in soda pop in one. You might have juice in one. You might have really good healthy food in one. And you might just have cyanide in one. And they're all red cans. Now, why can't you have some white on a can? Or a white can? And a blue can? And a green can? And a brown can? And a yellow can? And they're all cans of fluid. Kind of like gelatinous shells. With fluid inside of them. That's different. Every can's different. So you might want a different label on every can. Now, is it wrong to be different from the can next to you if you have different contents? No. And how is anybody supposed to know if you all wear the same color can and you all look identical, but you're, some of you are poisonous, toxic, nasty shit inside of those cans, and other people are beautiful aphrodisiac, amazing energy drinks that just bring you to life and turn you on and make you go, whoa, man, I want some more of that. Except I can't tell which one's which because they're all freaking red cans. Now, I'm never going to find another one of those. I'm going to drink a bunch of poison and garbage because not a can's wrapper. 
does the contents make? No. The contents is going to be different in every freaking wrapper. Every human being is different. Every sentient being is different. I have one dog and it's just an incredible dog and it'll protect me and fight anything off. And the other dog, if anything barks, it runs and hides. It's a different creature. Are they both black? Are they both brown? Yes, they can be brown dogs. They can be black dogs. They can be multicolored dogs. They are gelatinous shells with hair and then color on them. And inside of them somewhere is a filament that is a being, a spirit, an essence. That's what is important. It is not the wrapper. Why is everybody so stuck on the dang wrapper? I have a real problem with this because I don't see the wrapper as being significant. I have seen so many beautiful wrappers with ugly contents. Cans that looked like they would taste delicious because they had such incredible labels. And you know what? They're full of lies and yuck. Ugliness. Hate. But the wrapper? Oh my God. Just delicious looking. Like it was carved out of a fashion magazine. That's a wrapper. So what makes you think, what makes anybody think that it is the outside covering, the one you can do plastic surgery on, dye your hair? All that is, is just the mural on the outside of your vessel, of your WIB, W-I-B, WUB, energy of soul, in body. You create a vessel to occupy while you're here. Now, while you're in this vessel, it is a can, if you want to call it that. It is a shell. It is a virtually a floating gelatinous balloon filled with liquid and microbes and bacteria. And we control it with our spirit. And we all work together in unison to create a community that moves across and everywhere around and communicates with spirit through the organs, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and to spirit, which is somewhere inside of here. I am not the spirit. I am how the spirit expresses itself to you through the vessel. The color of the vessel makes no difference. I can speak the same words in any color, male or female, any race. That is why wibbly is so important. 13 measly little base words, root words. What grows out of a root? The root grows out of a seed. The seed is wib and wub. Wub, energy of soul, wib. What you form out of it, the body, anything embodied out of your energy of soul while you're here is a wib, something you created. And to communicate that, to send that thought, a wib, to wibbleize, to manifest something, to send that thought, that wib, that thought from wub to somebody else. You're wibbling men, my across the internet to webble. I'm doing that right now and it's working in between not working. Why is all this important? Because it's so critical right now when we have the means for the first time in history for all of us human beings and the other ones who are watching too, by the way, hello. We're not all human, ding, disclosure time. So for those of you who don't know all these things, please allow me to bring you up to speed. At a hey, guess what? We aren't gonna go that far. So. What we got out there, we talked over a couple things now. We got the war looming out of the way, and we got the um, 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 kind of your world out of the way almost. And the politics, oh goodness, that's a terrible word. We have to use it, but let's, guess what? Not enough changes yet. We're still hoping. We're still pretty bleak. I kind of feel like I've been set up in my book. There's a little story there, and all of a sudden, he thinks he's knowing what's going on, and Darby says, oh my goodness, look, the world's going to change, it's going to get all better, and we won't have to have this great battle that always has been predicted, and guess what? Bullshit. <sighs> Some days you feel played. When all of a sudden, things change hands, you keep saying, yeah, it'll be alright, it'll be alright, yeah, they're going to get them, they're going to arrest everybody, and they'll all be gone, and it doesn't. 
On to the next subject, guys. All right, we're on to the weather report. Ah, one more weather report. Why? Because because of that little bit of space weather we had, space weather, a bunch of CMEs coming at us, which means energy, energy moving through space at very high speeds. But the problem is, guess what? At nighttime, when there's no sun on us, <laughs> if you look at the information from our government, provided by our satellites and all the other things, we are getting hit from the rear end by some sort of energy, some sort of force that's causing our shields, Scotty, yeah, Scotty, hey, yep, Captain Kirk to the rear, shield our ass, because our ass is getting whipped at night. Yes, we're getting some high, high, high radiation, electromagnetic or otherwise, from the rear right, if you look at it from the top. And you can do that thanks to the wonderful world of projections by our government of what is possible using computers and sensors. And so what they're saying right now is we're catching a lot of um, um, pressure from the back. So our shields go up from the rear even more than the front at night because there's no pressure necessarily on us on the front end of us compared to the back end. This is a problem. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not, of course, I'm not a space weather guy. I'm just um, an intermediary talking head giving you fair warning. And I didn't get off for that. So guess what? That one classifies as a non-issue for the moment. Two days from now, though, there's a CME coming. CME. Two days from now. If it hits like it's supposed to, the weather's going to get even wackier. And the earthquakes are going to really kick into gear. And the volcanoes will have the extra charge they need to go ahead and do the super burst, super burst that they're waiting for. When I say super burst, well, um, this is cool. Down there in... Um, Guatemala, there's three volcanoes, and one of them is up to about 40 to 60 bursts, bangs, pops an hour. And so they're kind of on an alert because they've lost 30,000 people before from all that problem when it blows up and lands on people with all the ash and stuff. So they're kind of, the pyroclastic flow runs at about 120 miles an hour. So generally, by the time you see it coming at you, you can't turn and run fast enough to get out of the way before it just goes over top of you, burns your ass up, and gone. Whew. So, they're up to 60 explosions per hour. And they said when they hit 100, they're pretty much vacating. They're moving people out of the way, evacuating. That's in Guatemala, which is south of us. And that means that when it goes and all the ash goes up in the air, that's one of the things that will affect us. Affect us because the particulates, all those particularly small ones, the particulate matter at 2.5 nanometer size. Little tiny little things get in your lungs. They mess you up bad. You know, it's a good time for a gas mask. Not that little filter on your face. A gas mask. Because a little filter on your face, not so good. No. Also, plant life and all sorts of things. All the snow, it's got all this particular matter area. It's been all over the place. It's just full. Go up on windy.com, pull up particulates, go up to 2.5 particulate matter, and you will see it coming in off the coast again. Another big blast of it coming in. Pay attention. It's not healthy. You may find out down the road a few years why it wasn't healthy, but it's better to know ahead of time and just not breathe it in if it's right over you in three to four times the amounts that is supposed to be considered hazardous to your health and causes cancer almost assuredly. How's that? Coming to a town near you, and I don't have anything to do about that. So, again, check it out for yourself. Don't take the word, don't ever take the word of a talking head in a box that you can't even reach behind it and pat him on the back of the head or smack him if you don't like what he has to say. So, with that said, back to the groups that can qualify for a million dollars worth of materials that we are giving away to qualified groups. And they can be for the purposes of sanctuaries, retreats, villages, tiny houses, ghost towns, bringing them back to life. I like bringing ghost towns back to life. Uh, church groups, if you have a group that wants to build houses for the people that need it, not little cardboard huts, tiny, cute little houses, you know, that they can live in for the rest of their life. Tiny, but still, they can live in them. Have a big kitchen, maybe a few hundred square feet, and you make the food over there. Or an outdoor kitchen, even better, where you drop down covers and you raise them up. So you have an outdoor kitchen for cooking sometimes. That's a good thing, too. All these things are important. Uh, you know, common gardens. There are people who eat gardeners deluxe. You give them a chance. And you don't have to go in the garden because they love it there. And you can go out and do other things like maybe go, I don't know, build another house in one of your pure salvage outposts. Or build tables. Or build chicken coops. Or build all these things that these pure salvage outposts are designed to do once we establish them. What am I trying to do? Darby is trying to give away a bunch of material to different groups that will go ahead and establish pure salvage outposts on their properties to support their causes 
which are supposed to be philanthropic for the most part, not just put money in your pocket. In that case, I'll give you a huge discount, 50% off of anything you want to buy for your project that's just for the purposes of making money and not for philanthropic purposes so much. Although by putting a pure salvage outpost there, getting the 50% discount, anything you build through your pure salvage outpost, you will always get a 50% discount on all the materials that you put through a pure salvage outpost that you put together with material for the most part that I'm willing to give you for free. How do you qualify? First, you got to email that you're good people. Let us know. Then you got to do a short essay. If you can't write, find somebody that can. If you don't have enough people in your group to find one person who can write an essay to say, here's what we want to do, guess what? You don't have what you need. Next, you need somebody maybe write a little kind of a business plan. Just say, hey, if we had this, if you gave us this, um, it takes us $8 a month to eat. So we got to have $8 saved up and we got to have $10 for gas. And maybe we have some and I have tool lists. I want to know that you know there's tools you need. You can't chew on the wood. It's too hard. And therefore, you can't chew your joints. You got to cut them with a saw. This is a lot of stuff to learn when you go start building houses you've never built before. Hopefully, nobody's that. No, I'm joking, guys. Anyway, how do you qualify? Pretty much, you need to probably figure about five people if you're going to do this. If a homestead, and you don't have five people. Oh, I got me, my wife, and three chillins. Well, how big is your chillins? Well, one's two, one's three, one's five. Call me back in 10 years. You'll have a team. Otherwise, you're going to be dropping stuff on them, getting them hurt. And you can't have babies around when you're trying to build by yourself. Just a, you got to make a living. You still got to survive. So um, you got to have more people than that. And if you get it built, how are you going to take care of it? you got to have more people. The idea is to build a community and create unity and get elders to help the kids grow a future instead of just pretend they know what's going on because they watch it on TV and therefore they know how to do anything having never done nothing before. Now this group that I'm speaking of starts at about 16 and goes through 45 years old. Men that don't know how to screw a light bulb in unless somebody turns the ladder for them underneath it while they hold on to the bulb. You know, those kind of guys. The geniuses with the degrees. That, you know, hey, hey, could you go change my tire? Uh, what color clothes do you want to put on it? No, 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 no. That's not a doll. These are the things. You know, we don't have anybody with life skills. What happened? This is just shameful. Shameful. So, what is this? It's a community center to teach kids, elders, 60, 70 years old, come in and teach those kids. I know who thinks they even want to learn. There are kids that want to learn. There are kids that want to learn. And if we get a community center, not a business, because a business can't put a... We're still here. Okay, now. One more time. We're going to do a little rhyme. And it will be sublime. Dum, ba, 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 bum. Okay. If we get enough of these groups together and network, and somebody gets a chance to tear down a big structure or something, they can call in extra troops, people to come in and help, and they get to take home part of the stuff they get. Because I turned away millions of dollars in stuff being given to me every year to take down barns, buildings, houses that are being taxed, that are being been inherited in too bad a shape to save, but they don't want to waste it. So they want to go ahead and dedicate the materials to causes, but nobody normally wants to take them down. But guess what? people are going to be inspired to do things they never thought to do before because they have no job and they have nothing to do but sit home and wish washing their thumbs. Take one out of their butt and wash it and put the other one in. Take one out of their butt and wash it and put the other one back in. And whatever they do with themselves while they're sitting at home all the time. Feeling sorry for themselves because they can't go to work. So they just get fat and get unhealthy and get fearful and keep a mask over their face when they're sitting in their car so they don't get any oxygen and all these other things that we people are doing to just try to kill themselves faster so they can get out of here sooner because they want the rapture to come and the rapture incidentally is that if you get the feeling like i feel sometimes that just in the delight the enlightenment to know hey it doesn't matter i'm only a figment of god's imagination and if something happens and i disappear it's only the figment that disappears, not me. Just the part that you see in this box. What's left? How did you spend your time? If I disappear, how do you know I was even here? This video? Yeah. In fact, 
Do you even know if I'm here now as you watch this? Am I gone? There's no way to tell. Spooky, 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 spooky. But what are you doing with your life? What are you leaving your children's children? Your legacy? What is your legacy? You thought about that lately? How will you be remembered? For your money? Oh, yeah. What you left and who you left it to? And if you had a big enough pile of it and a bunch of kids, they probably just about killed each other fighting over it after you left. I watched it. I was a real estate broker. Yeah. Nothing like dividing a house up for a family of four. They won't talk to each other for the rest of their lives. Because mommy and daddy left them all that good stuff. Except they didn't leave everybody that wanted this and wanted that what they wanted and didn't leave the proportions they wanted and so-and-so felt they deserved more because they cared for mommy and daddy and so-and-so got somebody to sign everything over at the last minute so everybody else got boxed out of it and the family dissolves over things. Things. Now Take your big old house. Tear it down. Build five little houses and leave your kids four houses and leave one for whoever goes ahead and takes care of making them happy with their portion. Don't leave them all to fight over what you got when you leave. I'm talking to my fellow elders. The ones that got all that shit in the bank and stuff that they're holding over the kids' heads. If you don't be good, I ain't giving you none of my stuff. But if you're like me, you just tell them, I don't need your stuff. So enjoy the hike wherever you're going. I never went back for stuff from my parents. And the last thing in the world I ever expected to get when they left was stuff. Well, my Samoan stepmother managed to go ahead and take anything my dad would have possibly wanted to leave me, including all of his tools, which he did, and his guns, which I told him to put the part with a hole in her mouth and the other part toe and trigger and pull. Loaded, preferably. She didn't take my advice. Nice lady. Nice lady. Yeah. Almost as good as my second stepmother, yeah. Stepmothers are wonderful. If you haven't had a couple, I highly recommend you pass it up. No, there are good ones out there. Excuse me, I don't mean to badmouth all of you women ladies. There are good stepmothers out there. I just didn't happen to experience any of them. As a fictional character, that means I am not making a slam on all the women out there and all the stepmothers out there because there's some beautiful stepmothers who go way overboard to help the kids out, such as Trinity. And doesn't necessarily get back the respect, admiration. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, broken over the cookie jar. That's exactly right, Mike. So often, so often. People die. People cry. And then they go over to the bank account and start pulling money out. In my particular instance, I think it was a couple generations ago, we had an Aunt Mary who drained out everybody's money out of the grandma's account right before she died. That happens a lot. You notice that? So, again, you want to have a piece of land with a bunch of tiny houses on it, and nobody owns the land, so you can't kick everybody off. It's in a trust. You can't have a king, one person who owns the land. You have to have a trust or some sort of community... Did it again. Whew. All right. Last try here. I'm going to go ahead and end it. All right. Yes. You want to go ahead and get a piece of property that has no restrictions on it, preferably no on it, no city nearby to put building code on you, no county restrictions if possible. Um, the idea is to get as free a piece of property as you can, and then you can have multiple bloodlines on it without it having to be classified as multifamily commercial zone property and special septic systems and such. There's a lot of things you want to watch out for before you get the land and start these projects. I'm going to try to help you, if you qualify, for help to go ahead and do this. This can be a town, a ghost town. Hey, the Derby guy quit because he kept cutting